chances of rain once again as the temperatures get a little bit cooler. All those details coming up. Right now on News Channel 6, Richmond County Schools have banned cell phones in the classroom. We'll have more of the details. Also, I have a proposal to lower property taxes in Columbia County. We have more. And a local woman scammed out of thousands of dollars. We'll tell you about the warning signs as your news starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 11. everyone. I'm Dee Griffin. Thanks so much for joining us and staying up late with us. Coverage you can count on begins as there are no more cell phones for kids at schools in Richmond County. News Channel 6's Isabella Moody has more on the district's new policy. Richmond County school system is having a few changes in this upcoming school year, one being a new cell phone policy. The biggest change is that we, we will not allow them to be utilized during the instructional day. After looking at research and what other Georgia schools and states, they wanted to make the best learning environment for their students' achievement. For our students to be more successful, for our teachers to be able to have a more academically rigorous classroom environment. Uh, we also recognize that sometimes the without controls, uh, cell phones can be used uh, and jeopardize safety. Students will not be allowed to use their cell phone at any point in the day. The new policy does have some provisions for high schools to make some exceptions on appropriate times for the students to use their phones. The goal is for no phones at all, but let that not worry you. We have uh, administrative assistants in offices at all the schools that can assist in transferring messages to students. Uh, we also uh, know that um, kids can, uh, parents can schedule times for uh, the kids to check in before school in the morning and then right after school. Another topic is the Bel Air Middle School. Some things that have set the school construction back was market conditions, tight time frame for construction, 12 classrooms added for enrollment, and trying to finish up some projects. For now, students will be placed in an empty school that will be easy to get ready since it was just occupied. A swing space at uh, Lagford Middle School. Uh, so all, the whole school will go there for six weeks to two months and then come right to the new uh, spit polished New Beller Middle School. The hope is to get students into the school at the latest in the first week of October. If everything lines up where they need it, the contractor's schedule is to finish to make the transition between September 15th and October 1st. Everybody's working really hard to make sure this is seamless. Everybody's working very hard to make sure the communications are there. That's why we uh, made the decision early. In Augusta, Isabella Moody, WJBF News Channel 6. Time now for our first look at the forecast with meteorologist Jenna Petracci. And earlier over the evening time, we had a lot of rain and it looks like it's still wet out there. Yeah, it's a very damp night. We are still seeing some scattered showers around. You can see those raindrops on our camera lens here as we take a look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam in Swainsboro. So let's take a look now at where the rain is. We can see we have some spotty showers left over in Aiken County and we have a whole new brand brand new batch of rain coming in from the west impacting places like sandersville but let's start out from the east we'll take a look here, here at bamberg county down to allendale around olar fairfax highway 321 here in Earhart under some moderate to heavy rain also light shower activity near Burnettown down to new ellington and aiken county and then here's that new batch coming in from the west this is impacting anywhere from sparta down to tennell and Oconee. we have some heavy rain here but overall things are looking much better we don't have any more strong storms so you don't have to worry about any severe weather as you go to bed tonight high of 93 putting us right around average low of 71 degrees no rainfall at augusta bush field at least for earlier when that almanac came out, but that'll update because we definitely got plenty of rain come through Augusta eventually. 73 in Augusta now, 77 in Barnwell, Millen at 74. Sylvania, you're also at 74 degrees, 71 in Edgefield, and 72 in Saluda. The winds are pretty light, only up to around 6 to 7 miles per hour coming in from the south. We have a lot of moisture ahead of this cold front, and that's the reason for the storms, not just over the past couple of days, but over the next several days to come, and that's because the cold front will stall out over the area, keeping those rain chances pretty high. But in the meantime, for your morning planner, we will start out with possibly a few showers and storms around 5 o'clock, otherwise dry and foggy with those temperatures in the low 70s. And as I mentioned, we will see more rain and storms starting Friday afternoon. I'll have all those details coming up. But back to you, Dee.
All right, thanks so much. We'll see you in a few minutes. A review of the Augusta City Charter is something city leaders want to see happen, and now they're learning how. Commissioners hearing from experts from the University of Georgia on how to create a charter review committee. The experts say based on what other cities have done, the process can take as long as a year and a half and cost around $200,000. It's worth it because in the 28 years, we've never had any form of review. Uh, typically, the governments that do it every seven to 10 years. Uh, so this just makes sense. And I think we're at a crossroad right now in our government where we need to look into this. UGA officials tell commissioners whatever the Charter Review Committee comes up with will only be recommendations. The final say on any charter changes would be up to state lawmakers. Well, there are questions about proposed changes to the millage rate in Columbia County. There are questions about proposed changes to the millage rate in Columbia County, changes that could save money for homeowners. Grant Lee reports. Property values continue to rise in Columbia County, but it's a problem Chief Appraiser Morgan Audie says goes beyond the last four years. What we hear from the experts who study this kind of stuff is that we've basically been in a housing market depression for, for you know decades now. His office is responsible for setting the value of properties. He says the rise in values has been more noticeable since the COVID-19 pandemic when the housing supply started to decrease and prices increased. We had a lot of people wanting to buy. Interest rates started going down. There was a lot of opportunity there for people to get a house, but there wasn't any houses to buy. You know, houses were staying on the market for one day. But now times have changed. Commissioners are considering lowering the millage rate, but wouldn't necessarily mean taxes would go down. So assuming that your house had no increase in value this year, and we reduced the millage rate, then effectively you would pay less taxes. Okay? If your value did go up and the county lowered the millage rate, it would depend on how much they lowered the millage rate to decide whether or not it would be the same amount of taxes you paid last year or a lower amount of taxes. It would, it would depend. Johnson says, in effect, commissioners are trying to mitigate rising home values by lowering the millage rate, hoping to keep property taxes as low as possible. We live in a community in Columbia County where, where quality of life is good and property values are going up. So the commissioners have to do what they can to combat those values going up by lowering the millage rate. So for people to think that Columbia County is raising taxes, that is actually a misconception. We are lowering taxes. Property values are going up, and that's what's affecting the tax bill. The Columbia County Sheriff's Office wants you to be careful online after a Grovetown woman was scammed out of $22,000. An investigator said, educators say there are already concerns for the upcoming school year as the lack of substitute teachers remains a problem in South Carolina. Teachers say some of the reasons behind the shortage are low pay and behavioral issues from students. But some say it's a problem that can be addressed. If you have a class and you know there are behavior issues in there, let's deal with those behavior issues before the sub gets in there. Let's not just leave them for the sub to have to deal with. So I think the more proactive schools can be, the better it makes uh, those situations for the substitutes. Um, and then, of course, you know, doing everything that we can to raise the pay. Educators also say the requirements for subs should be strengthened to ensure students are getting quality teaching while their normal teacher is out. Well, it's that time of year again for children to get their updated immunizations for the new school year. Uh, local health departments are working to make it easier for parents to get their children's vaccinations. And doctors say if you're unsure of the vaccinations needed for your child, the health department can assist you. If you have your vaccines given in Georgia, we would have access to your vaccine record as well. If you have a student that's new to Georgia schools, regardless of the grade that they're going in, they are required to have screenings done. And we can do those screenings at the health department. They need a vision screening, a dental screening, a hearing screening, and also a nutrition screening before they can get enrolled into Georgia schools. And don't uh, wait until the last minute to get your child's vaccines as health departments are expected to be busier at back to school time. Coming up, USC Aiken Athletics is getting a makeover. We'll have a look at the Pacers' new softball field when covers even count on continues. And the wet and stormy pattern continues. We have high chances of rain over the next few days, including the weekend. But on top of that, we also have some cooler temperatures. All those details when we return. Perhaps some exciting news.